Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today we will talk about the Action Provider architecture. As always, let's start with a little bit of motivation. So you're developing an application which is called Snapcat and what it does, it shows a list of pictures of cats. When you're selecting an image of a cat, you can do multiple things, such as sharing the image of the cat, or reporting it, liking it, writing a comment, or if, for example, you're the owner of that image, you can delete it. Each of these actions that you can do with the image, they have nothing to do with each other and they behave differently. Moreover, you want to be able to develop these actions separately by different team members or even by different teams in your organization. And since we're lazy developers, we want to be able to, to add extra actions once they've been built and developed. We want to be able to add these actions seamlessly, easily and without any extra work. Oh, and also, not every action can be performed by every user in every state. For example, not every action can be performed on many uh, items selected, many uh, images selected, and not every action, like for example delete action, can be performed by every user, only the owner can delete the image, and for example like reporting an image can, on can only be done by a moderator user. So let's see how we can do it with the uh, action provider architecture. So let's start by creating the first item in our architecture, the action itself. So we'll create an interface for the action, and it will have three components. One of the components will be its name. This is what will be shown to the user when he clicks and selects an image. Another component will be a can perform function that returns a boolean and it receives some context which will, can be an array of anything and the final thing that an action will have is the perform function which will also have a context and because some actions can be asynchronous it will return a promise okay a promise for the action it will be a promise of boolean in case of success or failure uh, or even a void, okay? It will be a promise of void because we can report an error by rejecting, rejecting the promise. So now, after we've created the action, we need to create someone that, that holds all the actions in our system and provides them when it is asked. So now we'll create the action provider, which will be a class action provider, okay? And what it will have, it will have a list of all the actions that it holds. It will obviously initialize it. We will have a register function in order to register new actions. So we'll have a public register action, action and it will be a vote function and we will uh, push the new action to the actions okay and we'll need some kind of function to retrieve the actions and only the actions that can be performed so this is exactly what we will do the final function that we will add we'll call it get actions and it will receive a context of any and we'll return an array of actions and what we will do it will we will return these actions and filter the action only that can be performed context. Okay, so we'll returning we'll be returning all the actions that can be performed. Now let's look at how we can use this action provider inside our application. Okay, so this will be our application module, some one of them, and this will be, I'm putting all of it in the same file for the sake of the example, but you can imagine it is split into different modules, so this will be an action provider module, module, and this will be the application module, so 
for example, we'll have the cat class and we'll have the in the constructor we'll have the owner ID owner ID okay so each cat holds many information but for the sake of this example all I need is the owner ID we'll see later why I need it so we have the cat and now we will implement the cat gallery okay and our cat gallery what it will have it will have multiple things okay so for starters we'll have a constructor which will receive the action provider and we will save it for later use and now we'll have multiple functions that the user interface can can communicate with this gallery and call them. We'll start by by implementing the cat selected which enables to select multiple cats. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll get all the actions action provider, get actions that and we will send the cats as the context okay and then we will show the actions and i will not implement it like i will implement it as a private show actions actions action array and i will not actually implement anything inside of it just for the sake of the example okay do this show actions so uh, basically this function what it should do it should show in some kind of way you decide uh, the actions that the user can perform on the selection okay uh, and we will have uh, also a, a function for a single cat cats void and it we will simply call the cats selected uh, with the cat and that's it okay and after the cat was selected uh, now the user sees the actions and now he clicks on one of the actions and now we need to perform this action so we'll expose also two functions perform actions uh, which receive a uh, perform action I'm sorry which receives a cats an array of cats and the action to perform and what it does it calls the perform uh, the action dot uh, perform on the cats and when it is done it does something Okay, I don't really care, and if it fails, it does something else. Okay, so your, again, your decision, what it does when it succeeds or fails, or you can like, for example, show some loading bar, and when it is done, you, delete, you remove this loading bar, or whatever. Okay, your decision. And same thing, we'll expose a perform action on cat with the action action void and we'll call this perform perform action on an array of cats and action and of course typescript doesn't support overloading neither does javascript so we'll need some kind of different name so perform action on cats and this will be perform action uh, excuse me this will be perform action on cats and this will be perform action on cat so this will be on cats okay so this is our cat gallery and you can see that this cat gallery doesn't really know what kind of actions it shows and what it what these actions actually do so the final thing that i will show you is actually implementing one of these actions so we'll pl implement the delete action module and it will have an action, delete cat action, and it implements 
in action. Um, not calls, class. Okay, delete class uh, cat action. And what we'll have, we'll have a, con a constructor which receive this, receives the current user ID, which will be a number. Okay, saves it. Uh, and what we'll need to implement is again three things. So first of all, the name, get name, uh, and we'll return delete. Uh, we need to implement the can perform action, public can perform, it receives a context and returns a boolean. So when can we perform the delete, the delete action? We can perform the delete action only when all of the context items Okay, all of the items are, first of all, the item is instance of cat, and the item owner ID is equal to the this current user ID. Okay, so only when all of the items are cats, and only when all of the cats are, the cats images are owned by the current user, only then the delete action can be performed and so what the, the final thing, thing that it is left to be done is the perform uh, function and we, again once again it uh, receives an array of any as a context and returns a promise so what we do here we return a delete gets from server and we will pass it the context so the delete cats from server this function it is our private function delete cats from server and it receives an array of cats and returns a promise void and i will again not implement it I will simply return a promise dot resolve. Okay, let me just fix some compiler errors. So it yells at me that the action, the property name is missing. Oh, because I made it not a property. This is how we do a property, and I will probably yeah, I will need to make it a read only. So now this is now fine and. The perform is missing, but here it is. Oh, I made a typo. Okay, I made a typo. Perform. Okay. So now I fixed it. And now everything is compiling. And the final thing that is left to be done is uh, register the action into the action provider. So, like, I don't know, for example, uh, let's uh, create an action provider provider here which will be a new action action provider okay and this will be created inside the action provider module and it can be a singleton inside your application so every time every module can import that uh, action provider and we will simply register our new delete get action with the current user ID, which you can uh, get through some, I don't know, some service that provides you the current user ID, or you have a global state property, or some other way, you know the current user that is logged in now. I will simply put a random number, just for the sake of the example. So, as you can see, this action module, this delete cat section module uh, is totally isolated from the rest of the application. The application doesn't really aware, doesn't really know that this action really exists and all you need to do to, to include this action inside the action list is simply import this module and it will be automatically added to the actions list. So let's look once again and overview the code to see what happens here. So as the action provider module is loaded, it creates the action provider and when the delete action module is loaded, 
uh, it registers the delete action inside the action provider. So now when the cat gallery is shown and some cat is selected, uh, one or many, it doesn't really matter, it requests from the action provider uh, the actions with the array of cats. What it does, it calls the getAction function and it goes over all of the actions, for now it is just the delete action, and asks the action whether the action can be performed on this context. And remember, this context is cats. So the can perform function is calling the can perform function of the delete action. And what the can perform action of this specific action does, <clears throat> it goes ov over every item inside the context, checks whether it is a cat, and that the owner ID of that cat is the current user ID. Only then the action can be performed. Okay, so uh, let's assume, for example, that the current user is actually the owner of that list of cats. So now this returns true. So now uh, this returns true for this delete action. And the delete action is returned here from this filter and returned to this property. Uh, and now we are showing these actions. So after we've shown the action to the user to the, that sees the cat selected, that he selected, and the action that he can perform, he sees the delete action, which is given by the name delete. And uh, now he clicks the delete button, and what it does, it calls the perform action on cats with this specific action in the cats, and what it does, it calls the perform of the action with the cats, uh, and the perform function of the delete action actually deletes the cats from the server and returns a promise, which in this example always succeeds. And once the action is succeed is done and uh, succeeds, we uh, do something to show the user that everything is okay and the action was performed. So now let's look at the code altogether and see the benefits of this design. You can see clearly that the delete action is separated from the application and from other actions, so every single action can be developed by different team member or different uh, team in your organization without any dependencies between them. Also, the actions are clearly separated uh, from each other and every logic of the perform and the can perform can be separated very easily and uh, there is no mixture between them and it is very very clean and you can create multiple actions with different logics for the perform action and for the whether the action can be performed at all. Another advantage is that every single action can decide on whether this section can be performed on the specific item. Like for example, in, in our example, we ask this delete action whether it, it can perform on the list of cats and it returned us true. But uh, for instance, we've searched user to add as our friends and we've selected multiple users or one user and we're now asking the action provider to give us some actions for the selected user. So this delete cat action will see that the context is not a cat, it is a user. So it will return that it cannot be performed. So the application will not show this specific action, the delete cat action. And once again, I want to mention that in order to load another action to your application, all you need to do is to load uh, that actions module and that's it. There is nothing else that should be done. The application will show this action in the action list and when the action is pressed, the button is pressed, the action will perform its logic. You have watched an episode about the action provider architecture. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more architecture videos by clicking over here, or if you trust YouTube to know what you really want to see, click over here. If you want to see more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Programarist.